Good afternoon, everyone. How's everyone doing? Okay, so I'm a, I just got to tell you, I'm a son of a Baptist preacher. I'm sitting behind like this pulpit here, um, and only getting 30 minutes to speak is really setting me up for failure already. So I typically feed off of the audience, so I asked a question again. How is everyone doing today? All right, amen. <laughs> Okay, so, th so thank you. It's terrific to be here amongst colleagues and friends where I can have more of an intimate conversation about unleashing the hidden value of IT. Now, I'll start off by raising two fundamental questions. The first one is, how do we as an IT organization move from or go beyond the vital and essential role of keeping the technology lights on and within our organization, maintaining the technology infrastructure of our organization. How do we go beyond that? And how do we move into a new and sometimes uncharted territory of not just supporting our business customers, because that is essential, but also being the business that you support? I'm here to talk about that from my perspective as the CIO of AARP. Uh, but first, before I get into that, I, I need to talk a little bit about see how this works. There we go. A technologist can't think. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about and just give you the context about AARP as an organization. Now, many of you um, may have some insights into what type of organization that AARP is. If you think that we are an insurance company, think again, we're not an insurance company. If you think that somehow that we are associated with the healthcare industry because we're advocating and fighting for ensuring that 50 plus Americans have the health access that they need, think again, we're not a political organization. If you think that we are an organization that has some wonderful discounts that has, whether you're traveling or whether you are getting a meal or whether you are trying to buy a product and service, you know, across the landscape. Well, you're getting a little closer to what AARP is, but that is a microcosm for what we do. In a nutshell, AARP, we do this. We fight for and we equip individuals to live their best lives. Making sure, and we believe, that no one's possibilities should be limited by their age. We help people achieve health security, financial resilience, and realizing their possibilities. That's who we are as an organization. Now, I know the audience here is a little bit younger, but I notice there are a few members that may be a few individuals that are approaching that magical age. And so if you haven't heard from us, don't fret. You will. You will get a letter from us and embrace it, embrace it with passion. So what, what does a social mission, how does IT support a social mission organization? Well, in a nutshell, our IT support is no different than most traditional IT organizations. We keep the infrastructure lights on. We manage the workforce, we manage the capabilities and the assets the workforce use. We secure our data. We ensure that we are building, an envir building environments that are very, very agile, very, very uh, not resistant to change, ensuring that we have strong architectures, no different than any other organization. But we've done something, we've, we've taken a little bit of a different tack on that. And as was introduced, we begin to look at how do we take an organization that works tirelessly, tirelessly for our internal customers, tirelessly to deliver value for the organization, but not get the credibility that we deserve from all of the time and all of the efforts that we pour into our organization and supporting it. So we begin to think in a little different. We can continue chasing that and trying to get the type of credibility and trying to get the type of resources that we want and that we need to be able to support the organization, or we can start thinking like the business, and not just supporting the business, but being the business. And so one of the things that we set out to do is finding ways that we can connect our resources, our vast resources that we have within IT, 
and start doing things that really align with the bottom line of our business. Our business, we are a social mission organization. That is the business that we're in. And so we began to look well beyond how we can support CRM, how we can support ERPs, how we can, how we can uh, develop a digital strategy that allows us, our marketing organization or an engagement organization to, co to connect to our customers, which is our members. We began to start thinking about our customers, not the business customers, but the 50 plus population and how can we bring our resources to bear. So the example that I'm going to share today is one of a few things that we're doing. And I think this example can apply to any organization, at least the practical and pragmatic steps that we've taken. Um, I'm going to show a little bit of a video clip here. It's like 30 seconds. Um, I don't know if I have AV in the room that can start that video. Double there agent. Spy thriller. You don't know ARP. Thanks to the AARP Tech Program, this guy is spying on his new grandson. AARP Tech gets people better connected to technology to better connect with each other with social media, digital devices, and apps. If you don't think hashtag love dad when you think AARP, then you don't know ARP. Find more surprising possibilities and get to know us at aarp.org slash possibilities. So this ad that you just saw, this is an ad that is running nationally on every major network, every major ca cable channel in rotation. And what does this ad have to do with an IT support organization? Absolutely everything. Because this program I'm about to describe that really bolsters the bottom line of our organization was born, conceived, incubated, and delivered totally with IT resources. And this could be furthest from anything that we traditionally would do within our IT organization. But it's closer to anything that we do, do as an organization and bringing social change to the 50 plus population. So why did we begin to start thinking this way? Well, b before I even get, to get into that, let me tell you how the idea was, was generated. Actually, it was generated here, right here in Vegas, about a year ago. Like many IT organizations, we support our internal customers. One of our internal customers, of course, is our events team. We do major events that brings in thousands of our members on an annual basis to understand and enjoy and consume the services, programs, products that we have. And as an IT organization in supporting our events function, what we observed during that support, making sure there was network connectivity and all of the things that we would do from an IT perspective, we had some observations that most of the individuals, we could get 30,000 individuals to our event. Most of the individuals that came to the event stopped off at a little booth that we set up because we were supporting the event, but we set up a little, they gave us a little real estate. And we decided that, I decided that I wanted my staff to start getting closer to the bottom line of the organization, getting closer to our members. So that gave us the opportunity to get from behind the curtains and supporting our organization. But my staff started, un started having this realization that although we have exhibitors at our conference that were spending millions of dollars to have a presence there, we had lines on a little 10 by 10 booth of members that were circling around the building just waiting to get a question answered about how to use their digital device. How do I have, a, I have my smartphone with me, but I haven't been able to get my mail open in, in, in weeks. Or someone gave me this nice shiny iPad that's still in the box. I have no idea how to turn it on. And we realized that there was an, an extreme hunger for this type of knowledge, this type of education among the 50 plus demographic. Now, this didn't go unnoticed among the business areas of ARP. But again, we, already, we had a strategic plan that was already set. And digital literacy was not anywhere in our strategic plan. But as we began to start taking a look at this concept that we saw that was happening here in Vegas, my team, because we started looking at ourselves a little bit differently, how can we develop more of an entrepreneurial mindset to bring this idea to fruition and really get it on the digital road, give it on the strategic roadmap of our organization? So we started out in Humble's beginnings. And from there, we have moved this program to something that was a little 10 by 10 booth at one of our national events 
to one of the hottest things that we're doing at ARP. Again, our business, we're in the business of, being, of, of creating positive change in, a, in, a, in society. That is our business. So the so way we measure ourselves is how much impact we have on society and what type of relevance we have with the members and the 50-plus population that we are talking to. So we started with humble beginnings, and in very, very quick fashion, we realized that we had caught lightning in a bottle. By the time that we took this concept out to proof of concept, we were, as you see on this video, we set up in an incubator when we were doing our event in Atlanta, showing what we could be doing out in the communities. We are a program-based organization. We have wonderful programs, helping folks stay on the road longer. We do 8 million tax returns a year. We do very, very big programs. This was another idea that IT came up with. Why don't we have a program since Technology is an imperative now. It's not a nice, nice to have. It is an imperative. Why don't we have a national program that connects people and closes the digital divide? And we know among our members, the digital divide is wide. And so we set out on this journey. And with this, I mean, the, 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 the evidence of the results are clear, that there was a need in society for this type of program. And we didn't stop there. We've developed this program to be more of a high-touch, high-engagement program, going into the communities, going into the local communities, all of the major markets. But we also made sure that there was an online component because as our members, as the older population was discovering these new possibilities through technologies, now they're driven online and they've started creating communities of their own. So we wanted to make sure that we facilitated that. And the press, it caught fire. Every major, every major publication that had interest in this topic started talking about it. And that was very, very important for us as an organization because, again, our organization is about social change. It's about making an impact in society. So from the USA Today to local newspapers to, to, uh, to broadcast media, we got a, we, in a short period of time, we had over 150 million media impressions about AARP tech. And recently, we didn't set out to do this, because we use our trade show event, the ARP trade show event, as an incubator for this idea, we recently won an Excite Award, something we didn't set out to do, but we're proud of that as well. So this is a journey that we've been on, but why did we begin to go on this journey when we have enough to do to support the organization, to support the operations of an organization, that is a full-time job plus some. I don't need to preach to you about the pace of change of technology. It's changing at a staggering pace and trying to keep up and trying to stay ahead of and trying to partner with the business, trying to develop, trying to develop architectures that are much more reusable and agile. It's very, very important for us from a support perspective from IT. But if you begin to start talking to CIOs, I mean, I'm sorry, CEOs, you begin to start talking to CFOs, they're realizing that they can leverage IT for a strategic advantage for their organization. Because according to Gardner, over the last five years, 70%, as 70% of all new revenue streams that have been created have been created as a result of technology. And that's staggering. And so, newsflash. What business are we in? What do we live, breathe, and eat every day? It is technology. But if you are a traditional IT organization, we typically look at technology through the lens of supporting an organization, not through the lens of supporting the organization's bottom line. So we've gone on a journey about two years ago. We went on a journey where we were doing IT transformation. And I sat down with my team and asked them, what is the business you want to be in? And my team started scratching their head. What do you mean, what is the business you want to be in? We're already in the business of supporting our customers. Our business hasn't changed. And I stopped them and said, therein lies the problem. Our business hasn't changed, and it needs to. Because the pace of change is staggering, not only with technologies, but just customers, companies trying to keep up with the demands and needs of their customers because of technology. 
And so companies are looking for strategic advantages that they can leverage without going and trying to create something new. Leveraging assets that they have at their disposal that they're not using, but just look at those assets in different ways. So this is, this is what I'm proposing is really not a flavor of the week, such as we, and we hear it all the time, we get these catchphrases like run IT like a business, harnessing the value of IT, getting business value. We hear those flavors of the week all the time in our business. But what I'm suggesting is that this is more of a paradigm shift, that IT organizations need to begin to start thinking this way, need to begin to start thinking about the bottom line of your business, not the bottom line of your, your, your business customers internally. That's important. That's absolutely important. And that is the core of what we do. However, let me ask you this question. When was the last time that you walked into your house, turned on the lights, took a step back and says, wow, my utility company has given me value? Doesn't happen, does it? <laughs> you expect that. You expect when you sit down in front of your television set that the cable is just going to work, the channels that you go to is just going to be there, that your temperature and thermostat is going to regulate things the way that you want, want them to be, to be more comfortable. In your world today, that's a commodity. That's not value, that's what you expect. And quite frankly, most of the things that traditional IT organizations do for, do for their companies has become that type of commodity. Your customers are not seeing it as value. It's an expectation. And as I was talking to my, my brand new friend, Jay, who just walked away, the CIO of the American Cancer Society, I remember the day when I was bringing home better technology than I can ever buy off of the store shelf because companies were leaders when it came to um, personal technology and making sure that their employees, their staff had the things that they need to, need to do their jobs. And sometimes we got, got to take it home. But now I'm dealing with customers that the technology that they're using, access to information, access to services that they need to get things done and get decisions made very, very fast, what they're finding is, is that I can get things done much faster at home than I can at work because I don't have to deal, deal with the bureaucracy that comes along with partnering with my IT organization. So this is a chase that we're going to be in for a very, very long time, and there's no winners in that chase, trying to gain credibility by providing better support to your customers, your internal customers. That now is an expectation. Where IT now needs to go is gain credibility with making sure that you're meeting the bottom line, the bottom line, in the lifeline of your, com of, your, of your company, whatever that may be. Again, ARP, is, it was our social mission. So let me describe very, very briefly here just five fundamental steps that we took along this journey. As I said, when we were going through our transformation, I asked the question, what type of business you want it to be in? I got a lot of deer in the headlight looks. I said, we're going to be in two separate businesses here. One is one that the company expects from us, and we have to do that well. And we, not well, we have to be excellent at that. And I want to be best in class at supporting our internal customers. But what the company needs more from us, especially as I see our strategic initiatives that we're going to be driving towards over the next five years, they're steeped in technology, totally steeped in technology, whether it's IT or not. And why not be a part of that revolution? So, the first step that we took along this journey is really converting engineers into entrepreneurs. I have, I'm blessed to have, um, and I'm sure every CIO will say this list like we said about our kids, but I'm blessed to have one of the talented teams that I have ever had the opportunity to work with. They can go very, very deep into areas of technology. When we're looking at things such as how do we have the best in class ERP to support the business operations of, our, of, of ARP. I have individuals that, I don't have to go out to consultants, I have individuals on my staff that can bring me the answers to that. Whether we're talking CRM, ER, I mean, ECM, or whatever, whatever three-letter letter acronym that we constantly get engaged in. Wonderful staff. But when I started asking the question about how much that they know about the opportunities that we're driving towards as an ARP organization, 
What are our challenges? What are our opportunities? Who are our customers? How is it segmented? What is the market? What is our market share? When we started asking those fundamental, fundamental business questions, again, more deer in the headlights, because that is not the focus that we typically have. So we started this transform transformative effort at con really transforming many of our, much of our staff, most of our staff, into individuals that understood more aspects about our market, more aspects about our business. So as we began to dig deeper and mine the opportunities that we have, we had the tools to do it with. And the best tool to do it with, of course, is just understanding the market, understanding the business you're in, just like any entrepreneur would, would do. So we started there. But we didn't just stop there. One of the, finding opportunities is easier said than done. But I submit to you that IT is in one of the best, has the best strategic advantage of probably any part of any, org, any organization or any function within your organization because there's not many parts of your organization that are not steeped or leveraging some aspects of your service. So not only do you have to understand the service that you provide to them, you have to understand aspects of the business function that they support. So we get a chance to see the broader landscape. And so what we started doing is having innovation sessions, bringing in those ideas. What are you seeing? What are your customers telling you? Um, and then pairing that against the understanding that we have we, we, we received about our strategic, our strategic drivers as an organization as a whole. And we didn't stop there with that understanding. Newsflash, we manage most of our organization's data. We manage it, we secure it, we make sure that we can disposition it. But in most cases, from an IT perspective, we say, well, it's their jobs to understand that data. So we have the data, let's start using it. So we started mining the data that we're managing, started looking at it from a different perspective, providing our own insights on that data. We leveraged in, in places where we felt that we needed help, we engaged our partners who had experience and understanding and being able to distill data deeper. And again, this helped us understand some of the opportunities that we had at our organization. Just that with the example that I showed you earlier with ARP Tech, that was data coming in from our engagements that we had with the membership staff doing events. That's how we got that, that, uh, that idea on the table. And we got a host of ideas on the table, but we distilled those ideas into the ones that best fit into the, corp the strategic plan that our corporation had developed, that our, our, I'm sorry, our association had developed. So we married our ideas back to the plan and we chose something that we all felt that we could start formulating. The next thing that we really had to do is start assessing our talent in a different way. Now, as an IT leader, most of us have gone through tons of assessments, looking at your, looking at your, 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 your skill sets, looking at the competencies and the capabilities you have, doing a competent um, skills gaps analysis, defining where am I weak on the competencies that I need to best support the organization. Those are things that we are expected to do and we should continue to do those things because those competencies change as technology change. But one, of my, one mantra you will hear me always say, and my staff probably gets tired of me saying it, dig deeper, there's gold down there. We stop asking the question, what do you do? We start asking the question, what can you do? And one of the things that we discovered is that our staff brought in a bounty of skills that probably wasn't necessary to support IT, but could be absolutely very useful in some of the things that we were wanting to incubate for the organization. So we started cataloging those skills and documenting those skills. And in the case of ARP Tech, we found individuals that were certified trainers that we didn't know about because they did it, they moonlighted as that. We found individuals that had backgrounds in curriculum development. We found two professional voiceover professionals um, that did it, of course, moonlighting. Matter of fact, a commercial that you, that you saw that is doing this rotating nationwide now was an IT resource doing that voiceover. So we were able to find a host of talent 
to be able to take this concept, this great idea, and says, well, yeah, we have some talent that we can start taking, molding, and looking at this idea and try to bring it to fruition. And so that's what we did. So we had the idea. We began to look at the staff and see if this is something that we, as an IT shop, could do. Because again, this was totally something very, very different from anything that we traditionally would do. What was our next step? Well, we can try to sell it to the organization as a, something that we have mined, something that we have found, and bring it to the back, the parts of the, our business, the parts of our organization that manages programs. But again, this is about developing more credibility, building more value for the organization. So what we decided to do was that we were going to incubate this idea and do it ourselves. And um, when we first made that proclamation, um, there was a lot of spinning heads on my staff. He says, how can we do this? We've never done anything like this before. We don't have the talent. Where do we get the money? Because in most cases, if you're looking at IT budgets, they're looked at in two different dimensions. The first dimension, of course, is our operational spend that we have that keeps the lights on. And there's definitely very, very little room there to take money from that and use it for investments. The second place, of course, is our capital spend that we leverage to, to roll out new capabilities for our business customers. And again, even though IT, from ARP's perspective, we manage the capital spend, we don't prioritize the spend. There's a whole committee that does that. So we would have been competing against other things that were strategic priorities for, this org for the organization. So what we decided to do, we would self-fund it. Self-funding it without having any money. How can you do that? <laughs> There's a lot of creative ways. When you begin to think like an entrepreneur, when you think less like an engineer that needs process, things that are there, you can think of some creative ways to do that. And one thing that came to us is that we will start leveraging and having conversations with our strategic IT business partners that we have traditionally spent over the years millions of dollars in supporting the organization, supporting the operations. Let's have the conversation with them. And quite frankly, that conversation is easier to have when you're in the midst of a um, contract, annual contract renewal or RFP negoti negotiation. Talking about the things that are important to you as an organization that will bolster the overall organization and having them to make investments in that. Your strategic partners, I, I gotta tell you, I was surprised with the reception that we got from a lot of our strategic partners. Because at the end of the day, our strategic partners are technologists themselves. Many of them sell directly to the consumer. Many of them have a hard time with the 50 plus market. That's why most major technology companies are only marketing for 18 to 24 year olds. So they begin to see life in a little bit of a different way. And so we are able to get some funding there. The second place that we were able to get funding was from our internal business partners that would have stake in the game. Again, we have parts of AARP that manages programs and been managing programs for years. This is within, squarely within their wheelhouse. We just found a new opportunity, a new way of, of developing a program that was very, very unique. Nothing, nothing like it existed in the industry. And um, we went to them and shared with them that we would take on all of the risks, but we would need some investment to get started. And we had favorable conversations there as well, because most that knowing that they're going to maybe get something out of that, that they're going to be managing and taking it to the next level at some point, most would be willing to let you take on the risk or let another organization take on the risk. And we were very, very willing to do that. So we got all of this, the three things we got the, the idea, we got our resources aligned, we got funding for it. What did we do? We went out and did a proof of concept. The proof of concept was incredible. It absolutely blew the organization away. Um, we did it in Atlanta. We had about 14,000 individuals to come through, take a look at this new model of training that we're going to be taking out into the communities, out into the local communities. Press was all over it. I mean, it just really, really blew the organization away. And I can say one thing is that um, the C-suite doesn't get excited about just excitement. 
They don't get excited just to buzz. They don't get excited because you're energized about something. But they do get excited about the data. And if the data comes back and demonstrates that this is lightning in a bottle that can impact your bottom line, they're going to pay attention to it. And third-party validation is absolutely an imperative. Uh, the press was one of our best friends when they began to start talking up this idea and talking about um, the gaps and in, in, in the services that we'll be providing um, to society at large. And so our board, our board couldn't ignore it as well. So no one could ignore this. And so what do we do with it? You know, we have this great idea, lightning in a bottle. What do we do with it? It was nowhere on our strategic plan. Digital literacy was nowhere on our strategic plan. But it needed to be. So, if it, so we, after the proof of concept, we were prepared. We always thought this, this would be a great idea. We always believed that it would be very, very successful. But like with the cartoon that you see up here, we didn't want to get caught up chasing something for a long time, finding success, and then asking the question, now what do I do? We were prepared. So we went from the proof of concept and immediately took our team into a pilot, a multi-city multi pilot, where we are at the end of the pilot phase now. And again, we are just, uh, and it continues to grow from there, just continues to grow from there. We dusted off our business case, we put together our business case for the proof of concept. And I will say one thing about a business case. If you are doing something within IT, use language that your business can understand. Don't go outside of the box and try to put together a business case or put together a proposal that is not in line with the way that your company communicates because you're not speaking the same language. So we made sure that all of the language, even though we were doing something outside of the box from an IT perspective, we made sure all of the language that we were using and when we were putting together our business case that we did it within the constructs of what the organization could absorb. So we went into this um, pilot mode. The pilot mode, again, just was really phenomenal. And um, we're nearing the end of the pilot now. And the last thing is, in building this credibility, back to IT, our, our goal was never, ever, to build a broader IT. It was really to do our best work for the business. And our best work up to that point had been in supporting the business operations. Now we can say our best work is actually supporting the bottom line of our organization. But we knew that we're not going to house this in IT. I didn't want to build a whole nother function because we're on to our next idea. We're on to the next thing that we're incubating. And so we're, we're developing a plan to integrate this back to the business. And going back to that second step where I say where you can get funding and start having conversation with your business partners, they are eager and ready to accept the challenge because you have cleared the roadway for them and gave them something else that they can do to really bolster the, the work that they're doing for your organization. So that's where we are with integrating it back into the business. So those are five fundamentals, five fundamental things that at ARP we are doing a little bit differently. And again, you know, from my perspective, this is, you know, it's just not a flavor of the day. This is really a paradigm shift that many IT organizations in five years, probably all IT organizations are going through. Um, if done right, it's really something to behold. I mean, you have a energized and creative IT organization. You have your, your leadership and innovation at your organizations is strengthened, and you're delivering new products, new services to your customers. And like when I was checking in today, and I love the shirts that I was reading, it's all about the customers. And that's one thing that we in IT sometimes forget. We think of our customers as the business customer. No, the customers are the bottom line who are consuming your products and services, and we need to think more in that way. And the bottom line is, is just that. When, you do, when we do these type of things, it bolsters the bottom line for our organization. So thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. Thank you for letting me share a bit of our journey here at ARP. I appreciate it. <laughs>